Welcome to iLecture Online and here's another example of how to find a magnetic field, in this case due to a current carrying wire. So let's read the problem. It says find the magnetic field at a point a distance r away from a wire of length 2a carrying a current i. The point is directly across the midpoint of the wire, which will make the problem a little bit easier to do. So here's our current carrying wire. The length of the wire is 2a. Here's the midpoint, so the distance from there to there is A, the distance from there to there is A. Um, let's see here, we have the point of interest right here, a distance R away from the wire, and directly across from the midpoint. And so the question then is, what is the magnetic field equal to over here? And of course we have a current carrying wire, so let's say there's a current I that long, uh, of that value right here, in that direction. Now. The wire is not infinitely long, there's only a limited amount of wire here. We don't know what happens above that, below that, we're only considering the contribution of the current in this segment of the wire at this location. So how do we do that? Well we can see that different pieces of the wire will have different contributions over here and the amount of the contribution will diminish as the angle gets larger and we're farther away from this point. So this looks like something we're going to need to use integration for. So to do that we're going to take a small little segment right here. Let's say that the direction in the vertical direction here is y and the line segment uh, that we're considering here is a distance y away from the midpoint right there. And the length of this little segment let's call it a little dy. So the length of that little segment is dy. And that segment will be a distance r away from the point of interest, so let's call this r. And this distance from there to there is big R, and this distance right there is y. And right away you can see the relationship between r, y, and big R. You can say that a little r right there, the hypotenuse, is equal to the square root of uh, r squared plus y squared. All right, now, how much does this little line segment contribute to the magnetic field over there? Um, well, let's use the equation that we used before for a single point charge that says that the, um, the magnetic field B is caused by a zero mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times the charge that causes the magnetic field times V cross R divided by R squared. Again, R hat, that's a unit vector in the direction of the position vector from the charge to the point of interest. So if this is vector r right there, we can make that into a vector r. And then this here would be the unit vector, like so. And then the charges here are causing magnetic field there. By the way, direction-wise, if you use your right-hand rule, you point your fingers in the direction of the thumb, and the fingers, the thumb, in, you point your thumb in the direction of the current, and your fingers will point in the direction of the magnetic field. Notice that it's a circular or the magnetic field goes around in a circle around the wire and to the right of the wire the magnetic field is into the board so let's just indicate that the magnetic field here will be into the board. Now since the magnetic field here is not caused by a point charge but by a small line segment we have to make an adjustment to the equation. So the small amount of magnetic field here is going to be caused by the small amount of wire so we're going to call, it, we're going to call that a dB and that is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi and instead of q times v we're going to call that i times dy multiplied times the directional vector r divided by r squared. So q times v is the same as i times dy. If you say well why is that so? Well quickly we can say that i by definition is equal to dq dt or simply said the amount of charge passing by in a given amount of dt and then v can be defined as um, dx dt or in this case since we're moving in a vertical direction here we can call it dy dt so this is dy dt and if I then write q times v I can write in just a moment here so if I write q times v that can be replaced by uh, let's see here, q times dy dt, and if I take my dt and put it underneath the q, I can say that this q divided by dt times dy, 
and the Q times dt is equal to i, so this is equal to i times dy. So you can see that Q times v can be written as i times dy, which, which is what I did over there. All right, next thing we need to do is replace r squared by what r squared is equal to. So this can be written, db can be written as mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times i times dy cross r divided by r squared, and r squared is equal to big R squared plus y squared. All right, we're almost there. Um, so dy is a small little dy right here. The r vector, that is the unit vector in this direction, and we have an angle between them here, which is theta. Now, we can say that 180 degrees minus theta, and if we take the sine of that, let me rewrite it again. So if I take the sine of this angle right here, the sine of theta is the same as the sine of 180 degrees minus theta. And this here is 180 degrees minus theta. So if I take this angle here, 180 degrees minus theta, or this angle here, theta, it's the same thing. So this can now be replaced by the angle theta. And if I look at this triangle, this is the opposite side to theta. This is the adjacent side to theta. I can then say that the sine of theta is equal by definition to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And in this case, the opposite side is r, and the hypotenuse is little r right there. So this is the opposite side to the angle. This is a hypotenuse, little r. And so then if I rewrite this right here, I can say this is equal to db is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times i. And instead of dy times r, I'm going to write dy, the magnitude of dy, times the magnitude of r. And of course, it's a unit vector, so that's just simply 1, times the sine of the angle theta. And then divided by r squared plus y squared. And then I can see that the sine of theta can be written as big R over little r. And since little r is equal to the square root of r squared plus y squared, that looks pretty good right here. So we can say db is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times i times dy. And instead of the sine of theta, I'm going to write big R divided by little r. And little r is r squared plus y squared to the 1 half power. It's the square root of this like that. Then I can combine all that and finally write that db is equal to mu sub naught divided by 4 pi times i times r divided by the quantity r squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power. Okay, now that's the contribution of, to the magnetic field here by this li little line segment expressed in terms of the current, the distance away from the wire, and the distance away from the midpoint right here. And I'm missing my dy. Can't do that. There we go, dy. All right, now we have to integrate that over all the little line segments. What we're going to do is we're going to integrate from 0 to a and double it because this line segment will give the exact same contribution as this line segment. So to find the total magnetic field B, and of course we're looking for the magnitude here uh, because we already found the direction. So the magnitude of B is equal to twice the integral of dB from, and I guess I want to magnitude that out only, from 0 to A, which is equal to twice the integral from 0 to A of this quantity right here, which is mu sub naught i times r over 4 pi. Those are actually constants. So mu sub naught times i times r over 4 pi, which eventually will go outside the integral sign, times the integral of dy over times dy over r squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power. So moving everything out of the integral sign that doesn't need to be there, all the constants. So this is equal to, and of course, this 2 cancels out this 4. So we have mu sub naught times i times r divided by 2 pi times the integral from 0 to a of dy divided by r squared plus y squared to the 3 halves power. Now that's a rather difficult integral. 
we can use trigonom trigonometric substitution or simply just go to a table of integrals. And when we integrate that, we get the following. This is equal to mu sub naught i r over 2 pi times the quantity. We have y divided by r squared times r squared plus y squared to the 1 half power evaluated, evaluated from 0 to a. OK. Now you notice that this r will cancel out one of those. So this cancels out one of those r's. And now we go ahead and evaluate that when we plug in the upper limit. So this is equal to mu sub naught i over 2 pi. When we plug in the upper limit, we get a divided by uh, r times r squared plus, instead of y, we're going to substitute y. So this is a squared to the 1 half power minus when we plug in the lower limit. Now notice when we plug in the lower limit, when we plug 0 in the numerator, that goes to 0. So that disappears. So ultimately, the strength of the magnetic field at a distance r away from a line segment that has a length of 2a is equal to mu sub naught times i divided by 2 pi times the quantity a divided by r times r squared plus a squared to the 1 half power. All right. Now, what if you have an infinitely long wire? What if A becomes really large, infinitely large? Well, if A becomes infinitely large, then A is going to be much, much larger than R. And so basically, we can eliminate R from inside this, this, um, and this radical right here. This is to the 1 half power. So we can say, if A is much, much larger than R, this then will become approximately equal to mu sub naught divided, times i divided by 2 pi times a divided by r times a squared to the 1 half power. Because a very big number squared plus a very small number squared is basically equal to the very big number squared. And then you can see that a squared to the 1 half power is the same as a. So this can now be written as mu sub naught i over 2 pi times a over r times a. And of course, this a will cancel out that a, and this then becomes equal to mu sub naught i divided by 2 pi r. And that is equal to the magnetic field due to an infinitely long line segment or a very long line segment. As long as the line here is much, much larger than the distance from the, from the current carrying wire to the point of interest, that's the equation we'll use for the magnetic field. So either we will use this equation right here for a very long segment of wire, or we'll use this equation right here for a short segment of wire, where the segment is equal to 2a in length and the distance r away from the wire. All right, now that we have those two equations, we can now solve some problems by finding the uh, amount of current or the amount of magnetic field that we have next door current carrying wire. So let's go ahead and do some examples there. 